Hi, welcome. This video is going to show some tips for using the TM Series robot and the TM Flow software. We're going to start with connecting your computer to the TM controller. You'll notice on the bottom of the controller there's some ports. There are three Ethernet ports there and uh, one indicated by the arrows where you're going to plug your PC into. Once you plug in, it uses DHCP and after maybe a minute or two, you'll see the icon shown here. You can double click on it and that will bring in the login which the default ID is administrator and the default password is blank. So you say okay and click on get control. Once you've done that, you can start using the menu on the top left and they'll have access to all the menu options from here. Next, we're gonna explore the controller option. The controller option is available in TM Flow in several different places. We'll look at all of them. And the controller option is how you manipulate the robot and check IO and stuff. Uh, once you're logged in, you'll go to the setting menu and then controller. This is the first way you get there. I see others. I like this one to start with because we can see the robot in a simulated view down here. So as I move uh, the robot using the buttons on the left, we'll see the robot image on the right change. So this first one is joint. You can move each individual joint and you can select the speed to go. So you'll look, if you look at that robot, you can see I'm adjusting joint one, which is the base, and that's just going to move the robot around. Um, you can try some of these other ones. This is the camera joint or the, the tool joint. So you can see that rotate a little bit. Next is the base tab, and this tab lets you move the robot as if it was an XYZ type robot. And so if I click on the Z, it's going to move that Z by coordinating the joints required to make a Z move. Same for the X. So I don't have to move each individual joint. I'll just move in a direction, per se. And you could uh, enter a value into one of the axes, and then if you hold that move button, it'll move to that target position. So you can see it's moving out towards 600 millimeters. I'm going to set it back to 500 and move it back. So you can see the the joints coordinating to move in the X direction and it'll stop when it gets to 500. So handy way to get to a certain position. The tool tab is for rotating around just the tool, uh, the tool point. Uh, they call it tool control point. And then IO, you can look at the inputs and outputs that are on the robot controller and be able to see what the values are, whether they're on or off or what the analog value is. You can also turn on and off the camera uh, light, the light on the camera here. I like this one just because we can see that robot. But we'll go back and we'll go to the project. And in this case, we have to have a project open uh, before we can get to any controller options. So I'll just make a new project that's just junk and I'll call it throw away or toss out. Toss it's called toss out, toss this out or something. That's pretty descriptive. We'll say okay. And then once we're here, we can see the controller option right up here. So we just click on that. It's the same window as before, except we don't see the robot on the side. So we can move the robots around. All the tabs are the same. So we'll go back from that. The last place that I like to see it is in the point manager. There's a couple ways to get to the point manager too, but we have to have a point, so we'll just create one. But you can see now there's a controller button associated with that point. So we can just click on that. And it gives us the basically the same window as before. Next thing we're going to look at is putting the robot into Scara mode. This limits the joint movement somewhat so that it moves kind of like a Scara robot. We're also going to align the tool plate with the base. Once you've got software started, you can go to the setting menu uh, and then go to the controller. We've done this before in a previous exercise and I like doing this because I can see the robot here. I'm going to click on the Freebot tab. And once I'm there, I'll click on Scara like that button there. And that locks the uh, certain axes in a position so that you can never move, like rotate them. So if I move this by hand, you can see I can't really rotate it so that the tool plate with the camera is the silver part there. I can't change the angle of that and get stuck there once it's in Scara mode. So uh, I can't move these axes. So once I'm in Scara mode, if I want to align that, with the base, I want to align the tool plate and the camera with the base so it's kind of forward facing down. I can go in and enter some numbers under the base tab. I'll enter minus 180, 0, and 90 for RX, RY, and RZ as you see here. 
change the speed so it moves a little faster, then I'll hold the move button and watch this thing line up. It'll just go and point straight down at the base and then it'll stop. So now I've got it lined up and I'm in that scare mode. So it's going to stay in this orientation, no matter how I try to move it, it's always going to be pointing that tool plate uh, straight down like that. So if I try to move it now with using the free button on the robot, that's me moving it around my hand and see, I can move it in that plate that stays parallel with the work surface. The next thing I want to do is help you with adjusting your positions in case you don't get them exactly right. So we're going to go over adjusting positions on the robot and I'll show you some manual manipulation here of the robot where I'm holding the free button and I'm going to move the robot down to where I think is a good place to pick up this, this part here. So I'm just holding the free button, moving it, getting it close. And I've got the Robotique gripper and I've just put it right parallel with the part that seems like it's going to be good for me so I'll just test it out by holding the gripper button and in the second the grip will grip but see how those fingers are at an angle right here that's not the way they're supposed to be they should be straight up and down and what happens is as they close they go down a little bit so I need to go back to the program and adjust that position slightly and it's it's such a little adjustment it might be hard to do by holding the free button in so I'm going to click on the pencil to edit that point and I'm going to go into the point manager and then I'll go to the controller and once I'm in the controller there that's the window we've been looking at here in the last uh, few minutes and I'm going to go to the base because all I want to do is I want to move it like an XYZ and I just want to move the Z up so I'm going to click on the Z button I don't want to worry about any other joints I'm just going to click on the Z and I'm going to move it up and you'll see the the numbers next to that start to move a little bit so I'll just click it to move it up kind of and then you can see it here it'll move up a little bit so I'll start to just lift up off the table there so then I can help her fingers kind of straighten out the way they're supposed to and adjust it just make some tiny adjustments using that that controller option that we were just studying a few minutes ago once I have it in the right spot I'll uh, let the gripper loose so I can get the part out of there and you can see I can slide my finger under there now there's there's about 10 millimeters space for the grippers to close and go down in order to make finer adjustments more precise adjustments I can adjust the speed down to half a percent or I'm sorry 50 percent half a percent or or 0.1 percent and then move and that'll just make the robot move very slow so I can get really fine adjustments in there and these are things that are harder to do when you're doing it in free mode and then we can go and say overwrite the new pose to this point after we've made those five adjustments and then click on OK to save that into the, the point table on the note. Next, we're going to talk about the gripper settings for the Robotique gripper. So we're going to look at how to adjust the distance it opens and closes and the force used and how to initialize it and so on. Um, I've got a program here and you can see I've got this first block. It's the set block for the gripper. And this is the initialization block and you drag that in from the toolbox where you have the gripper icon with the little gear on it. Um, once you put that in, you put that in at the beginning of the program to initialize the gripper. But once you go and edit it, you can say whether you want to initialize it or not. That just means that you're going to test it at the beginning or not. And set that value to true to test it, false to not. And then we go down to the next option, which is the release settings. And if you look at those and click on variables, uh, you can see here that the release force is 50%. Uh, the speed for release is 50%. And the release position is at 20. So at zero means all the way open. So, and 100 means all the way close. So we're at 20, which means we're gonna stop just a little bit short of the full open position. So if you wanted to adjust how far it opens to make it uh, process go faster because the gripper's not having to open all the way, you could adjust it here. And then we'll look at the grip settings. And in the grip settings, we have similar setup as we did for the release settings. So we'll click on the variable. And then this first one is the grip force, 50%. Once it sees 50% of the force, it's going to assume the gripper's closed on something and it's going to stop. And then the speed is 50%. And then we're going to close up to 80% of the way. So 100% would be with the fingers squished together. 80% uh, is having them almost squished together. So if we wanted to adjust that distance, we could do that here. And then we'll just say, okay. And 
then okay and get back to to the um, gripper initialization node. Once we get back to the program, you'll see there's that gripper initialization and then we'll scroll down. When you do a grip, this is a grip node right here. It's gonna use the settings from that initialization and then there's a release down farther. Once again, gonna use those settings. If you wanted to change them before you do like a release, then you put another initialization uh, node right in above. Okay, the last topic in the video is gonna be about using the flow monitor and the display board. And then also we'll look at how we get some messages or errors from the robot controller. So here's a simple program or the program that I've been using as an example. And when we go to play it, I'll push play on the pendant. You can see this display board comes up and this is where you'll see an image and there's messages up here. You can see the color setting successfully. Um, it's going to give us other information as it's going along and we can create custom messages in there and adjust variables using the display node. This is a display node that I created myself. It just says vision and then found part moving pickup. Uh, and you can see on the left, there's a picture of the, the part that it was had found and then it gripped. So it gripped successfully. And now presumably it's moving over to the drop off point. We can also monitor this in, in the flow and see each node as it's executed. So we're here in the, in the find the part. Now it's moving to the pre pickup position and then it moved to the pickup position. It's going to grip and then it's going to go to the top after the grip. So we're waiting for it to get to the top. Now it's moving to the drop off position. So you can see, we can just watch the flow as it executes uh, each step while the program's running. If you want to know about the I.O., then you can click on that I.O. tab and it'll show you what's happening with the inputs and outputs that are on the controller. And then if you want to know any messages, you can go over here to this icon in the top right and it shows you some status messages. I'm going to clear them out and then I'm going to hit the pause button. And it says pause true. So we just got that message from the robot saying, hey, someone push the pause button. And if I push the pause button again, it's going to start the project up right from where it was. So now the message at the top says pause is false. While it's moving, if I bump into the robot, I'll try to stop it. It's going to take a little bit, but I'll try to stop it with my hand, even though it's in safe mode. And then you get a whole mess of messages that basically just say that um, we're stopping everything and the robot went into a safety mode because it ran into something. That's it on the tips for now. Look for other videos to help you control the TM robot. My name is Ray Marquis, Senior Application Engineer at Bailing. For now, the robot and I say goodbye.